When was the last time you stopped to think about the one thing you can't live without? No, I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about water. Without clean drinking water, life couldn't go on. So it's probably important that we know what's in the water we drink. The past 65 years, city governments nationwide have been adding a substance called fluoride to the water supply. The practice of water fluoridation started at a time in history when asbestos PCBs and DDT were all deemed safe and effective. And although all of these chemicals have been banned since, fluoridation is still a common practice. However, it's uniquely American. The U.S. has more people drinking fluoridated water than the rest of the world combined. In fact, most industrialized nations do not fluoridate their water, including Japan and 97% of Europe. So what exactly is it that we're ingesting? Well, it's not the same fluoride that's in your toothpaste. What's being added to municipal water supplies is a fluorine compound called hydrofluorosilicic acid. And it's a byproduct from the phosphate fertilizer industry. Yes, you heard me right. Let me break this down for you. Gaseous fluoride is produced during fertilizer production. Now, it used to go straight into the atmosphere from these factories. But Presently, filtration devices are used to contain the toxic chemicals, and what's extracted from the filters is then condensed into a water-based solution, which is packaged unrefined and sold to city governments for the purpose of water fluoridation. So how did this all start? Well, interestingly, in 1944, the American Dental Association themselves published that it was not worth the health risk to fluoridate water supplies. Too bad no one heeded their warning. Because the very next year, Grand Rapids, Michigan, became the first community to fluoridate. And what happened next would not have been possible without a push from the aluminum industry, which was looking for a way to safely discard their fluoride pollution and waste. In 1947, Oscar Ewing, a paid attorney for Alcoa, the biggest aluminum company in the U.S., was picked to oversee the Public Health Service, which is now known as the Department of Health and Human Services. He then made clear his lingering ties to the aluminum industry by promoting water fluoridation as one of the first official policies of the department. From there, the policy expanded tenfold, with an additional 87 U.S. cities fluoridating within the next three years. Fast forward to today, where children are growing up indoctrinated with the notion that fluoridated water is necessary because it prevents tooth decay. But is that really the case? In 1987, the National Institute of Dental Research examined 39,000 school children from 84 different fluoridated and non-fluoridated communities. And while the study did find that in fluoridated areas, tooth decay declined, the most interesting part is that there was a declining trend in tooth decay in non-fluoridated areas too, perhaps because of overall better hygiene. Okay, but not only is there no causal link, there's also serious health risks for fluoride overexposure. For one, an excess of fluoride causes fluorosis, which is the eating away of the enamel on your teeth. This is indicative of what it's doing to your body on a larger scale. You see, it doesn't just eat away at the tooth enamel. Only 50% of the fluoride we consume is excreted. The rest is absorbed throughout our bodies, our pineal glands, and our bones. In fact, an alarming study by the U.S. Public Health Service, which was later confirmed by Harvard Medical School, found that a deadly type of bone cancer called osteosarcoma was significantly higher in fluoridated communities than in non-fluoridated communities. However, the most distressing findings come from 18 studies done worldwide showing a substantial lowering of IQ in overly fluoridated areas. And there are many more adverse effects than just those. Not to mention that the FDA admits that fluoride is a drug, not a nutrient. Multiple ethical codes are being violated here by forcing us to ingest this drug. Look, let's call it like it is. Water fluoridation has nothing to do with said benefits. Think about it.
we're already getting our fair share of this substance through the dentist and the toothpaste we use every day. And what about the processed foods we're already in eating and drinking on a daily basis? We get more than enough. So the argument that we need to ingest this substance as well is baseless. Look guys, no matter what you think about fluoride, the real issue here is having a choice. No chemical, no matter what its alleged benefits are, should be forced upon the public without their consent. But let's not forget, as long as corporations are involved, our best interest isn't really the priority. So maybe we should be looking at water fluoridation as a money-making scam. It's a tale that's all too familiar. Governments and industry colluding to save money instead of saving lives.